are going to start with the third chapter of geography that is exogenetic processes part 1 first of all we will see the meaning of the word exogenetic exogenetic means the processes that originate externally to the surface of the earth as you all know that a number of processes takes place to the surface of the earth like weathering erosion etc now in this chapter we are going to study the three ways by which exogenetic processes takes place number one weathering this picture shows the weathered rock number second mass movement it is also known as mass wasting here in this picture you can see the rocks are broken into smaller pieces and are gathered at the foothills the third one is erosion as you can see here in this picture the rocks are being eroded now we are going to study what is weathering weathering is the breaking or weakening of rocks into smaller pieces there are three types of weathering depending upon the region where it takes place the temperature of the place and the type of rocks first one is mechanical weathering it is also known as physical weathering it takes place in arid climates or at places where the temperature is hot. The second type is chemical weathering. It is more effective in humid climates. The third one is biological weathering. It occurs because of living organisms like human beings, plants and animals. Now we will study about what is mechanical weathering. Breaking or weakening of rocks without any change in the chemical composition is known as mechanical weathering. Mechanical weathering occurs because of three ways. First one is exfoliation. This picture shows exfoliation of rocks. It takes place because of change in temperature. In exfoliation, the exposed part of the rock heats more while the inner part is comparatively cooler. As a result, the outer layers of the rocks fall apart from the main rock. This is called exfoliation of rock. As it is shown in this picture, the outer layer of the rock is exfoliated. The second type by which mechanical weathering takes place is granular weathering. As the name itself indicates that the rocks are broken down into small granules, these rocks are formed because of pressure on the agglomeration of sand particles. When water penetrates such rocks, the particles get loose and separate from each other, as it is shown here in this picture. And this process is called granular weathering. The third type by which mechanical weathering takes place is block disintegration. In block disintegration, the rocks are broken down because of difference in temperature and water. Because of the change in temperature, the minerals in the rock expands and contracts and this leads to widening of joints or formation of cracks in the rocks as shown in this picture. Water accumulates in such joints and big blocks of rock separate from each other in the form of longitudinal sections. Mechanical weathering occurs because of the following reasons. First is temperature, second frost, third crystal growth, fourth release of pressure and fifth water. Now one by one we will see them in detail. Temperature. The minerals in the rock expands because of heat and contract when temperature decreases. Due to such continuous contraction and expansion, tension develops in the rock particles. As shown in this figure, the cracks develops in the rocks and they break. Weathering of this type is common in hot deserts and in areas where the diurnal range of temperature is higher. Diurnal means daytime. The next one is frost. It is also known as frost wedging or frost action. You know that the volume of the water increases when it freezes. In areas 
where the temperature drops below 0 degree, for quite some time, the water accumulated in the cracks and crevices freezes and its volume increases. As it is shown in this picture and this leads to tension in the rocks and they shatter and fall down. The next one is crystal growth. In rocky coast, wave hit the sea cliff. The water is alkaline. In this alkaline water, the soluble minerals in the rocks get dissolved. This leads to formation of small holes. Alkaline water gets stored in these holes and because of heat, the water gets evaporated and only crystals of alkaline material remains here. As crystal occupies more space, tension is created in the rocks and holes are formed. You can see here in this picture the holes formed because of crystal growth and these holes look like a honeycomb. The next one is release of pressure. The outer layers of the rock exerts pressure on the inner or lower layers. When this pressure ceases to exist, the inner layers get freed from the pressure and leads to weathering of rocks. The last one is water. In some areas, the rocks are formed because of pressure and agglomeration of sand particles. When water penetrates such rocks, the particle gets loose and separate from the main rock, leading to weathering of rocks. As it is seen in this picture, how the water penetrates in the rock and the rock is broken down.